All right, guys, let's go back over ratios and proportions, just some reminders. Um, we're gonna start with ratio. So ratio is kind of your keyword here. Um, remember when it comes to ratios, order matters. So if it says boys to girls, you need to put boys first. If it says chocolate to peanut butter, you need to put chocolate first, okay? Order matters. All right, so our first question example says, Mr. Rogers class has 12 boys and 14 girls. Which of the following represents the ratio of boys to girls. So the first thing I'm going to write down is the ratio. So boys, there were 12 to girls, there were 14. All right. And that is our ratio. Remember, we can also write it like this cowboy and horse. All right. But in this case, our answers are all in the, um, this form right here. So 12 to 14. Okay. So all we're going to do is our keyword being ratio. Okay. Once we have that keyword, and our answers all look like this, all we have to do is stack them and butterfly. So I'm gonna stack 12 to 14 underneath each one and butterfly to see which one gets me a right answer. And we know when we butterfly, we multiply corner to corner. Um, so before I start doing that, I do wanna quickly do some easy elimination. So let's eliminate answer choices that are definitely wrong. So one of the ones that I definitely see that's wrong is C. And the reason that C is wrong is because it's out of order. Order matters. Okay. So it has the girls first at 14 and we know that can't be right. So order matters. C is definitely wrong. All right, the other one that I see that is definitely wrong is going to be D. And the reason D is wrong is because the first number is 12, but the second number is not matching. So just like with a fraction, if one number matches and one number doesn't, it's definitely wrong. So the 12 matches, but the 21 and 14 do not, therefore D is also wrong. So now I'm just gonna butterfly my first two. All right, so I'm gonna butterfly four times 12, which is 48 and then 14 times 3 which is 42. 42 does not equal 48 so A is wrong. So the last one that we have to butterfly is going to be B. Okay so 12 times 7 is 84 and 14 times 6 is also 84. If 84 equals 84 then B is my right answer. Okay so that was just a refresher on ratios. Remember order matters. Okay um, and remember that if you have boys first, then you have to put the order first here. All right. All right. Let's talk proportions. We've learned three different ways to do proportions. Proportions are solved using W K U. It doesn't matter if you have a percent proportion, if you have a three numbers given proportion, or if you have a one number given, which is a measurement conversion, right? All right. So there's three different types of proportions, but all of them are solved with that WKU method. All right, so let's talk about the differences. The first one, the keyword is what percent. If you see these words, okay, 100% of the time, if you see the words what percent and your answer choices are percentages, you need a percent proportion. So we know that percent goes on top, right? Total goes on bottom, all right? And specifically, now we're talking about how many are shaded? So specifically, we have shaded. And again, total always goes on the bottom. All right, and then we have what do we know and what is our unknown? Well, we know our unknown is what percent? And I know that percent goes over 100. There is no 100 in this problem. The 100, you know you use it because it says the words what percent. Absolutely, anytime you see the words what percent in a problem, you should set up a WKU with percent over 100. Now let's talk about what do we know. We know that shaded, there were one, two, three, four, five. So five shaded. And how many total? Six, seven, eight. So total was eight and it goes on the bottom. So the fraction that represents shaded was five out of eight. All right, so now let's look at our answer choices and we can solve our proportion. So before I start solving, I'm gonna do my easy elimination, my definitely wrong answers, okay? It's so important that you eliminate definitely wrong answers before you solve. So I know that 5% fi uh, is definitely wrong. And the reason I know it's wrong is because I counted five shaded triangles. Five shaded triangles is definitely not 5%, right? 
5% does not equal five shaded triangles, okay? That is not how it works. We know that D is definitely wrong. I also know that to change a fraction to a percent, I don't just grab these numbers. That's not how it works. I don't just make five over eight become 58. That is an obviously wrong answer, a definitely wrong answer, because that's not how we convert fractions to percents or decimals. We know that we need to either solve our proportion or cowboy and horse, okay? So I'm gonna solve my proportion. I have five times 100 is 500, and I'm going to divide by eight, okay? So I stack them, 500 divided by eight, and I'm gonna end up getting 62.5. And again, my answer is a percent. So the best answer for that one was B. All right, so again, anytime your question says what percent, you need your WKU with your U being percent over 100. All right, now let's talk about this one. When you have three numbers given, okay? When three numbers are given in your problem. So if I read this problem, it says if eight frogs, so eight what? Eight frogs can eat 120 bugs, 120 what? Bugs. It says how many frogs will it take to eat 345 bugs, 345 what? Bugs. Y'all, the word after the number is so important. So you can clearly see that we have given been given three numbers, eight, 120, and 345. And of those three numbers, I have frogs, bugs, bugs. So I know I have two matches, bugs, bugs. So this is going to be a WKU. My words are frogs and bugs, okay? And then I need to fill in what I know and what is my unknown. So what I know comes from my question. It literally says eight frogs, 120 bugs. I know that I know that because they're in the same sentence together. They're before the question mark. They're together. Eight frogs can eat this many bugs. Eight frogs can eat 120 bugs. Then my question specifically says how many frogs, right? That's my question. Will it take to eat 345? bugs. So because this number is off by itself, it becomes my unknown. And from that point, we've set up our WKU and we're ready to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. 8 times 345. Okay, 8 times 345 is going to be 2,760. So I didn't show that work on my paper. I just did it off to the side over here, but you would do that on your paper, 345 times eight. That's gonna get you 2,760. And from there, we're going to divide by 120. So I write 2,760 on top, 120 on bottom. And the reason that I write those like a cowboy and horse is so that I can both label, right? Cowboy and horse, and I can look and say, do I have any zeros that I can eliminate with my zeros trick? I do, one zero on top, one zero on bottom. So now I just have 276 divided by 12. So 276 divided by 12 is gonna get me 23. Okay, again, that was 276 divided by 12. And remember, your division la lesson last week told you you needed to have one, two, three blanks, and then draw your arrow to make sure your decimals line up. And again, 12 didn't go into two, but it went into 27 two times, and then it went into 36 three times. So my answer is 23 frogs, okay? All right, and that is when they give three numbers and your labels match. And the last type of WKU is that when they give us one number, okay? The question has one number, and specifically, it's asking you to change whatever that is, whatever measurement that is, right? Miles, yards, feet, inches, quarts, pints, cups, whatever. And they want you to turn it into something else, okay? So this is when they give you one number. We know we're gonna need our star chart. We know we're gonna need our reference materials, okay? So it says a glass pitcher holds 9.5 cups of milk. How many quarts does it hold? So specifically 9.5 what? Cups. So cups, two quarts. So we have cups, two quarts. Okay, we know we get our no from here. So you can see that cups 
is here, right, working my way up, and quartz is over here. So what I have to do is multiply up. Two times two is four. So that's gonna be four cups is one quart. Remember, you pick one from the right and one from the left. So cups to quarts, they don't line up. I have to multiply up when that happens. Okay, multiply up. All right, and that's what I know. And then again, my unknown is my question. So my unknown is 9.5 cups. So I make sure that label matches. And the question says, how many quarts? Okay, from there, my WKU is set up and I can cross multiply and divide. So I'm gonna cross multiply 9.5 times one, which is just gonna be 9.5. And then we are gonna divide by four. I do not have any decimal, I mean, any zeros to cross out, um, but I do have a decimal in my cowboy. And again, I would label my cowboy and horse, okay? And it, a decimal in the cowboy does not matter. And my horse doesn't have one, so I'm good. I have a blank before my nine and a blank above my five. Four goes into nine two times. We get one. Bring down the five. Four goes into 15 three times. Okay, that's 12. We have three left over. That means we're gonna need a donut, which means I need another blank. Four goes into 37 times, which will leave 28 with a two. I need another donut. And four goes into 25 times. So how many quarts? It holds about 2.375 quarts. Okay. So again, one number given with cups to quarts, that's going to be a measurement conversion. Three numbers given, two labels matching. That's just your normal WKU. And then when it says those keywords, what percent, you need that percent over a hundred. So those are the three WKUs we've learned and how to differentiate.